Alright, so the goal of this video is to give a quick quick overview of uh, uh, like an Ascender or any live core um, series uh, switcher. I know at the time of publishing this it's actually quite an old box, but it's still out there, still being used. Uh, so let's zoom out a little bit. <coughs> so when you start, uh, you wouldn't go to this IP address up here. You would go to the IP address on the uh, on the box, usually ending in .2.140. Uh, um, but uh, in the simulator, this is what you get. Um, so the basic overview here is that you're looking at three different tabs. You got setup, edit, and live. Um, they pretty self-explanatory. The big difference between edit and live is that in edit you're dealing with one screen, in live you're dealing with up to four. Well, up to eight if you're in a linked configuration. Uh, one hidden gem uh, is these quick setups. So you can disable HTCP on all of your inputs, outputs, and monitoring right off the bat. Um, I recommend for most live situations that you do that. Uh, what you can also do here, um, outputs, enable ID patterns, so that uh, what it'll do is it'll show a big magenta uh, number of the uh, number of the output that um, is being displayed. Um, okay, so let's jump right into setup. So you have pre-configuration, so you only do this once, and then you have the rest of your configurations. Uh, internal rate, typically don't change this. Length, this is if you're using multiple units. Output, uh, the big thing here is if you're adding layers, so let's say I needed eight layers on one of the outputs, I could take them from another output and then you just lose that output. You can also do your rotation here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, here you have your screen setup. So this is where if you were, let's say, doing a wide LED wall or um, a uh, a blended screen, here is where you would need to do it, and you would just drag them between each other. Uh, so let's not do that though. We'll call this here uh, program, and we'll call this one the DSM. Oops, DSM. And then what I'm actually going to do, just for purposes of this video, I'm going to drag these out. And what that actually does is now we only have these two screens. So Let's go over to inputs. Uh, not really relevant to this. Uh, this is where you'd set capacity if you were doing something unusual, like using multiple uh, ports together. Uh, native, this has to do with the native layers. Um, I typically just check all three. Native backgrounds, this is where you would set your native background. Not going to touch on that in this video. And uh, here, you know, usually I don't do anything. All right, so outputs. Uh, you got an overview and then your individual settings. This is where you have your test patterns and you need to disable them um, to, to actually see anything. Um, uh, here you would do HTCP manually. Um, area of interest, uh, this might be if you were doing like a very specific LED wall and you wanted to have, uh, let's say, uh, your actual preview look uh, displaying, you know, at that resolution. So if we do this and then we go to live, you can see that now our program is this, but we won't deal with that for now. When we go to inputs, so here you have all 12 inputs uh, on the actual machine. These uh, will show like a refresh preview um, of what's on that input every second or so. Dive into here. So here you have active and setup plug. Setup plug, this is the plug you're editing. Active plug, this is what the, the machine is actually using. So I can change settings for all these plugs individually, but when I do this, this is what is being seen in that layer. Um, so let's just keep it on uh, SDI. This is where you might name it. So let's just say this is graphics one, cool. Um, and well, I guess let's also just do graphics one notes. Graphics two, graphics two, notes, um, and you know usually I wouldn't actually do this exact uh, um, uh, assignment. I would do um, you know graphics one, graphics one, notes, and then I'll probably input five and six for graphics two. Um, but I'll leave it on SDI for now. Um, so well. 
Yeah, probably not too much else. Uh, so library, the way that um, images and backgrounds work in here is you have your library. So here is where you would uh, just upload files. Um, or you can select here, capture, and then you can select which input you are capturing from. And then you'll save it as either frame or logo, and you'd hit execute. Um, difference between frame logo frame is full full raster logo is like a small little bug um, saving it into here you've got you know 100 slots doesn't do anything these are not accessible until you go into logos and here's where you assign them so frame one if we had you know, something actually uploaded you would select it right here uh, I've got some cropping options etc you only have four frames to play with and then four logos so it's a little bit limiting recommend this is just you know for your background um, and then yeah you know anything more that's a little bit more dynamic I honestly would just do with a uh, machine uh, monitoring so this is dedicated just to your multi view um, it's just the output settings blending this is if you're blending uh, two machines uh, or two two outputs um, this is where you would do it it has I guess worth noting it has its own separate test pattern so if you change the test pattern out here in options, it'll only go to the actual output plug, but here it will actually um, span it across the, the multiple outputs. Service, typically the only thing I do here, import, uh, import out, export. Here at, you know, at the end of the day, I'll generate and download, take it with me, and then if something happens to the machine or if we replace the machine, I have that data point to go back to and you just upload. Uh, control, you know, network is, maybe interesting here, EDID, if you're doing something a little bit more interesting. Um, factory reset, you know, most of the time you're getting these already reset, but that's where that is. You can set, so you can, uh, yeah, factory reset configuration, well, you can also erase memories here. So you can, you know, specifically just wipe certain areas. So, and that's all the setup. Um, that's covers, you know, very quickly all the, uh, most common items. So here in edit, uh, you've got a few ways that you can uh, affect things. Uh, so you can, so you've got these layers, uh, you can also select them from here. Um, you have control points, so you can stretch, drag. You also can uh, adjust the sizing so that you can set it full screen. You can set it, uh, if we had a source in there, you can also, well you can set clear all so that would delete uh, any sources in there although they didn't have sources yet uh, where you can do is uh, layouts um, and you can select any of these uh, pre-configured layouts so let's say you wanted a quad view there now you have a quad view you know sometimes that's a faster workflow than trying to do it manually you can also change uh, how many uh, outputs you're looking at the Maybe annoying thing is a lot of these leave you a lot of uh, empty space that you know, may not want. Um, but let's just go back to the default. Um, so there, so let's drop graphics one in right here. So now graphics one is full screen. And what I like to I like to do um, right off the bat is start saving memories. So you've got two different types of memories here. You've got memories and master memories. Memories affect single screens. Master memories affect multiple screens. So let's save, we're gonna go save mode. So now, uh, now it's flashing and we'll select here. We'll, uh, and now, you know, if you look very closely down there, um, you'll see that uh, input one is in layer A. Um, if we hold shift and click, now we're in the uh, name area and let's say this is graphics one and we'll call it full for full screen. And there we are. So let's actually do this. Um, we'll start building up a little bit of a palette here. So graphics one, notes, full, loop, full, cool. Let's drag in graphics two, save mode, graphics two, full. So naming becomes uh, very important later on because uh, these names, you know, mean something and they're, if you name them something you can recognize it and if you are uh, being replaced or something happens and someone else has to jump in, um, these are super, super helpful to have descriptive names that you can reference. Okay, so now we have four memories 
that we can recall onto a single screen and we know what they're called. So let's actually start putting this into uh, something you would use in a show using the master memories. Um, well, actually, well, let's go back to also look at the properties. So these are your layer properties, and uh, you can see where where you are and what source here. So you, this is another way to select what source is in your layer. Um, you can reset, you know, specific parts, position sizing, everything you would you know expect to have in a layer. Um, I think one thing to to know is uh, while you're positioning and size, um, you know, that's pixel. Your cropping is not based on pixels, so you, uh, that can get very tedious. So if you know you're doing a lot of cropping, just you know per perhaps pre prepare yourself there. Um, force transition, cross tran transition. If uh, you get a you know flying pip and you don't want to, uh, these are good options to to remember. Um, those will force the transition. So you know if you have it on a fade transition, it'll fade out and then fade back in, and it's new instead of. Uh, getting your, your pip to like you know, sweep over to to somewhere which oftentimes is not, not nice. Um, here you can also set the timing of uh, the layers um, so you can have uh, you know let's say layer A whoop, layer A well layer A you know you want that to go real fast but then layer B comes in afterwards so this is this is still um, a transition time of one second, so it's still quite you know, fast, but you can affect that there. Uh, and then, you know, a lot of these you just, for most shows, you aren't touching. Um, so let's see, you can also uh, copy, uh, so you can copy individual sections and apply them to uh, layers. So let's say paste, and then now we have the layers from the original. Um, and then also worth noting here is your logos and frames. Um, they can be dropped into layers, so you can do you can easily do that. But uh, because we had, uh, well, if we set up the native sets, this is where you would change your background. But oftentimes for very basic shows, you're not not touching that. Um, so let's go and start setting these memories into what we can use in our show in the master memories. So master memories, they work a little bit different. You hit save mode and um, let's say right here, and you get a little pop-up. So right off the bat, you can name it. So let's call this one graphics one, no notes. And then you've got two options here. So from saved preset memory, which is what I would say you're using probably 90% of the time. This is the probably better option. Um, from program and preview, this is also an option. So what the, well, let's talk about this. So here you have drop downs of all your active screens and you are selecting uh, which of the pre pre uh, presets you want to have on that screen. So graphics one, no notes. So we want graphics one, graphics one, save. And now it's saved. So now when we recall this, it will, oh, this computer is a bit slow, it will recall graphics one into both screens. So let's also do that um, for graphics one with notes. And then from this drop down, we'll say here. And when we recall that, now we have our notes input in uh, screen two. So we can do, we can just keep going, graphics two, no notes. And uh, this is where, you know, having a name that's easy to recognize and also, you know, keeping, keeping your inputs in order. So what I will actually do is I'll have, you know, let's say one through, well, let's say one through 10. So you can resize these things. One through 10 is reserved to just my graphics. And then if I'm adding like camera inputs, I'll go through and, uh, and move that there. It, oftentimes when I have like a blended or a widescreen, I'll keep my uh, blended widescreen looks further down, or if I have specific like pip layouts, I'll make one that is just with those. So let's say save mode, 
what I might do um, so that actually that what you can do here is uh, pull up filters and what I might do is save a layout without the source and then save selected filters and memories and that will just save the selected um, areas of the, the memories um, and that way I can get a uh, uh, memory with just let's say position and sizing um, so that's super useful especially on larger widescreens um, so let's actually go back and finish this out uh, so this one is going to be graphics 2 with notes graphics 2 with notes cool save uh, and honestly this is what a lot of these basic shows look like you've just got you know your full screen full screen inputs and sometimes they want notes sometimes they don't sometimes you want a camera um, so let's say well let's actually just make a uh, so one one thing you can do is right on the plug here let's, so let's say this is camera one you can get into settings um, you can also from this this point here uh, change the plug so if we wanted to let's say one program one part of it has um, yeah, STI coming from you know, wherever and then it goes to uh, the auction part which is on you know we were out of plugs or something and we're running it on the DVI so now we can uh, independently have have those plugs so we can actually call DVI let's say this is auction so now now we're in auction and when we change the plug to SDI our label follows it and we have camera um, okay so let's go back to memories we will save we'll call this one cam1 full alright cool so let's say we want save mode we want one that just affects camera one into our main screen regardless of what the notes are doing so what we can do is just deselect it hit save and now doesn't matter what's what's over here uh, master man whoop. ah yes I saved that incorrectly so this is actually a helpful learning you know mistake um, so right here we can see this is cam one full so this is the correct uh, uh, memory but it had the wrong input saved in what we can actually do is we've got two options right here reload back to whatever it was saved at or you can just overwrite and what it actually is if you you know cared to read this is you need to double click it to actually save so now cam one full is saved with the input so now if we go back to graphics one and when we want to call up cam one we see that it only affects the screen so that's one way that you can and then let's say you know during the course of the show you know you don't know if you're going to be on graphics two or graphics one or you're going to have notes you can always switch to to that imag camera just like that and then you just need to be aware of uh whichever input you were uh, on before so here in this case i would have pulled up notes where beforehand we didn't have the, the notes cool so how do you how do you actually take this to screen so right now we've only been in preview what we can do is we can just hit take and so this yeah if the, we were on actual hardware these would both you know go simultaneously uh, the computer I'm running this on is actually quite underpowered for for what this is uh, one thing that you uh, can do is so I mean you have this t-bar but you know, whatever uh, you can actually deselect which screens are being affected so now when we hit this uh, only screen one is affected uh, and you also have cut and uh, yeah you can also just double click these and it will reset uh, to well whatever and it's also affected just by these so let's uh, reset program cool so that is basically all of it um, what well one thing I didn't cover here is monitoring so this is your multi view so by default you've only got eight this is a pretty useless layout 
if we go to uh, properties here, we hit load templates. Here we've got a few more um, useful layouts. Um, depending on the show, sometimes I will let's say it's well, let's see. You know, sometimes you you'll want to see program previews. Um, usually, what I end up doing is I'll select this first one, gives me everything, and then I will actually go in and select the individual um, the individual tiles. And let's say uh, we'll change this source, and now we actually have screen one and preview. So let's call this preview one, and we'll call this one screen one, and then we'll call this preview 2 and we'll call this screen 2. Uh, and then what I would do is actually uh, adjust the bottom 8 to the uh, inputs that I'm actually using and uh, what we then want to do is actually save this. So now we have this layout saved. Uh, where this is useful is uh, let's say we also um, let's say we have a TD that uh, would like to see you know, something bigger, or let's say they are only interested in program. So at some point, they want this layout. Um, so let's save. And now we have these two different views that we can cut between as needed and uh, see different things at different times. What we can also do is go full screen if that's what you want. Um, and then, well, to get back, just remember monitoring. You can go back to screens. Uh, what you can also do is right here you got this button. It says set source in monitor, and that changes to full screen of that input. And then to get back, we'll just have your, your memories ready to go. Um, and one, I guess, item that's worth knowing is these cannot overlap. So this red border now, both of these would be blank. So just be aware that um, overlapping and the other limitation is let's say uh, input 5 was a 4k sort or yeah 4k or a dual link input 6 would be uh, disabled or widget 6 would be disabled um, and that's kind of a, a limit of the hardware um, so that's basically it that's uh, let's see, yeah, well, a little bit longer than the the target 15 minutes but that's you know, all the information that I, you know, use getting through a very basic setup with these. So, there we go.